Imagine that there are 200 people suddenly stranded on a deserted island with just the clothes on their backs. It's easy to understand why this is such a popular setting for movies and television. It's a scene of chaos, anarchy, and the absolute liberty for an individual to do whatever he or she wants and has the power to do, where the strong survive and the weak are vulnerable. It's a state of civil disorder. The antidote to disorder is obviously order. Order is a state of peace and security. So what would be required to establish order in this situation? What could be done to bring peace and security to this new island society and protect its inhabitants from theft and violence? Would it be sufficient to simply make up a rule that prohibits theft and violence? And if so, who has this authority and where does it come from? What if everyone gathers together and the majority of islanders vote to establish a rule prohibiting theft and violence on the island? And then a second vote is taken to choose someone that they trust to enforce the rule. Three quarters of the islanders vote to elect someone that seems to be the most experienced and trustworthy guy available. And we'll call him Ed. At this point, we can say that both the new rule and the newly elected Constable Ed have legitimacy. Legitimacy is popular acceptance of the right for those who govern to exercise authority over the governed. Legitimacy is like having permission from the public to hold a position of leadership over them. But just remember that having permission isn't a magic wand. It doesn't have any physical power behind it. And think about it. How many people do you think would break the law if they didn't fear being arrested and put in handcuffs by law enforcement carrying guns and then possibly convicted by a court of law where there are more law enforcement officers with guns and handcuffs who will gladly escort you to a jail cell where more armed guards will be waiting to make sure you don't escape while you're serving your time. Sure, there are those who would follow the law just because they believe it's the right thing to do, even if there were no armed officers involved. But for those who aren't angels, we resist committing crimes because the government not only has the legitimacy, but also the power to ensure order through various means of force and coercion. Now, wouldn't you know it, not even 24 hours after the island passes its first law and elects its first government official, the biggest, strongest, meanest, ugliest guy on the island, let's call him Joe, beats up a bunch of sweet little old ladies and takes every bit of food that they had worked all day so hard to collect. It's a shameful violation of the new rule. So someone is sent immediately to tell Ed. The newly elected Constable Ed responds within moments by calmly approaching Joe. Ed's all, hey Joe, you gotta return that food you stole from those ladies. So then Joe snaps back, oh yeah, says who? Ed responds confidently, I do. The people have given me authority. To this, Joe challenges, huh, you and what army? At this, Ed's hands start to get a little sweaty and he starts to lose a little bit of that confidence and his heart rate speeds up a little bit. And he looks around, all around him and sees that there's no one on the beach. There's not a soul in sight. He is standing all alone, looking up at a very large and increasingly angry Joe, who is easily twice Ed's size. Ed has legitimacy 
in the eyes of the Islanders. But the real question is, does Ed have the authority to enforce the law? Authority is both the right and the power for a government or similar leadership to enforce its decisions. So it turns out that Joe was right when he asked Ed, you and what army? Because if Ed does not have the physical power of law enforcement behind him, ready and willing to physically coerce Joe to comply, he will lack the authority required to get the stolen items back from Joe. This is because authority requires more than legitimacy in order to work in the real world. Authority requires real power in the form of law enforcement manpower, or like Joe suggested, an army, to enforce the law and coerce public compliance. Of course, the army doesn't enforce the law in our country, but you see, you see my point. Otherwise, some people will simply ignore the law unless they face a significant deterrent. In this case, Ed only has authority over Joe if he gathers enough people willing to physically overpower Joe if it becomes necessary. But let's say that later down the road, Ed gathers up enough skilled volunteers to function as a sort of law enforcement team, just in case future shenanigans should occur. If that were to happen, Ed would have authority. As time passes, suppose Ed begins to abuse his authority and create too much order, so much order that it infringes upon the liberty of the islanders. Well, that's no good either. Liberty is the greatest amount of freedom for an individual that is consistent with the freedoms of others in that society. But freedom from what? Well, excessive government control over its people. Civil liberties are restraints on the government's power over individuals. For example, the Bill of Rights contains fundamental constitutional liberties that prevent the government from infringing upon the freedoms of religion, expression, and privacy, just to name a few. I guess you could say that liberty is the opposite of order. Societies typically function best when there is a balance between order and liberty. Maintaining an ideal balance would be a challenge for any society, even if everyone agreed about the amount of control the government should have. But as it stands, the amount of power that the government should have over its people is one of the most significant debates in political science.